apologize for that. I had to get to the individual. All right, fine. Ms. Ankin, really, you ready to start? Uh, Absolutely, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Field State of Michigan versus Michael Brokaw, case number 19F22084. The motion affidavit for violation of probation, Mr. Brokaw. The allegation is that uh, there's a positive test for fentanyl on July 31st in violation of no controlled substance condition of probation. Do you understand that allegation? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. How long have you been in jail now, sir? Uh, since yesterday. Okay. And where were you arrested yesterday? I'm sorry? Where did you get arrested yesterday? At my father's residence. Okay. Okay. All right. Ms. Hanker, really, did you want to address Bond? Sure thing, Your Honor. Chenazi Kiriak Maruli, Your Honor, on behalf of Mr. Brokaw. Um, regarding his bond, Your Honor, we uh, would like for the court to know that Mr. Brokaw has made some significant strides um, in his recovery and in his health. He currently uh, lives in transitional housing. He reports being a father of two. I apologize. There's an amended, there's an amendment to the affidavit. There's a second affidavit that was filed. Um, so let me get that one on the record here as well. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, the uh, second affidavit uh, indicates that uh, the defendant left transitional housing without consent of staff in violation of court recovery rules. So we have a positive drug test and leaving uh, uh, transitional housing are both the allegations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you about that. I obviously was unaware of that. So, <clears throat> you want to speak um, a little about that second allegation in the breakout room? I can, if that's okay. Yeah, let me just, let me set that up, Mr. Broke. I'll let the corrections officers know we're going to put you in a breakout room. Okay. No, go into the breakout room. Yes, sir. Okay, we're back.
back on the record with regard to case number uh, <clears throat> 19F202084. I can continue with your bond argument, also, unless you had anything else you want to tell the court first. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, um, I did have an opportunity to speak with um, my client in regards to that second um, portion of the violation. He reports that he's unsure of where that comes from. Um, I, I know today's not the date and time to show proofs and things of that nature, but he assured me that um, he has been living in the transitional housing. He sleeps there on a nightly basis, but for the nights that he works the night shift um, at the Avalon place where he's been employed for nearly a year now, um, he reports being having a strong tie with his father um, who he visits on a regular basis. He actually provided that as a permanent mailing address as the transitional housing um, address may change. Uh, he reports being a lifelong resident of the Ypsilanti area. He states that um, since this initial case in 2019, um, that he has done a number of things. Number one, securing um, this job that he has. Um, uh, we are requesting, Your Honor, that he be allowed out on a PR bond and given the option to do an outpatient treatment program of some sort, because um, we do, he reports that if he is placed either in custody or is required to go in treatment, that he could very well lose his job um, and it will be a, a huge disruption of the life that he has since built for himself. Um, he pays bills, um, he pays his child support, he pays um, everything from the money that he generates from this job. And if he does lose the job, Your Honor, he states that he will be placed in a uh, significant position of hardship. Um, so we do understand the severity of these allegations, and he understands that um, treatment would be the best option for him. And that is what he's requesting on the court today. And we stand by him in that request. Well, there's there's no argument uh, back from the court that treatment is would be uh, appropriate. But <clears throat> at this point, uh, it's not the first violation of probation for this defendant in this case. And uh, frankly, it's just you know, too great a concern of uh, with positive drug testing and the lack of engagement with the transitional housing, whether he's left there or not, he's certainly not engaging fully with them. So for those reasons, the court does have concerns with regard to public safety if uh, this was to be the beginning of a pattern of continued use, that would be a serious issue as far as public safety is concerned. So the court will impose a cash bond. Matters can be set for hearing Mr. Brokaw on the 6th, next Monday at our regular drug court docket at two o'clock in the afternoon. Court's going to set a 10,000 cash corporate surety bond. If that bond is posted, you do need to drug test within 24 hours, community corrections, and drug test daily thereafter uh, to assure compliance with your conditions of probation. You understand that? Yes. All right, Ms. Brokaw, you're all set. Stay safe, okay? Your Honor, that's Monday the 9th, right? Monday the, yes. I'm sorry, did I say the wrong day? Okay. Yeah, you said the 6th. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, yep. 8, eight 9, correct? <laughs> Thank you. All right, you're all set, sir. <clears throat> And that was 10,000 cash? Correct. I believe we just have Mr. Griffin left. Yes, sir. Mr. Griffin, please have a seat. Jason Griffin? Yes. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Phillips Lane Township is Jason Griffin, 17W008729. Uh, this stems from a uh, traffic violation. The matter was set for a hearing uh, regarding non payment of that violation uh, in January of 2018. He failed to appear for that hearing. Any warrant he should be arrested at that time. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm looking at your uh, the information. Uh, the public defender gathered from you with regard to appointment form. This is not, we're not going to appoint a public defender on this. We're going to resolve this today, most likely, but um, indicates you're making, uh, taking home 800 every two weeks. Is that right? Yeah, give or take. Give or take. Okay. All right. And of that, so that's 1600 of that, you're uh, got 450, 550, 
right. You're not, not making a car payment or anything like that? I don't have a car currently. Okay. I'm, I'm not driving. Yeah. All right. Do you have any other significant expenses on a monthly basis? Um, other than what was noted, I don't believe so. Okay. So you'd be in a position. I mean, let me just get the, the total fine amount here. Up here. Let me see. How soon could you pay the court $140 on this? Um, I have it in my account right now. Also, my father, he is he wants to know so because he's willing to help me out as well. So I can probably I can definitely take care of that today, probably. All right. So this is truly just about, about the fine and not so the, the balance right now is 243, but if you pay the 140, um, let me just give you a little bit of time to get your get everything together and get yourself out of jail and things like that. Um, let's see, today is August the 6th. You get that paid by September 3rd, we'll, court will waive the remaining balance. So, you know, you'll save yourself a hundred and three bucks. If you get that pay 140 paid by the uh, September 3rd date. That You can make that that's happen. Good. I appreciate it, thank you. Okay, all right, that's the only business you have with regard to this matter. I understand you have some things going on this afternoon. Yeah, um, it's with the magistrate or something. Yeah, so, okay. All right, so yep, just get that 140 paid by uh, September 3rd. And that'll close this case out, okay? All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, it. All right stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really have a good day. You too.